<laughs> Good morning. It is Friday. That is Janice Joplin, and we've been listening to WXPN. Me and Bobby McGee Woo. after. What's up, fish heads? It's Friday morning. I've got a few pieces of eye candy for you. It's going to be short and sweet. I might get in. I might get into some eyes this morning because I I've got to get back to the spray bench. Um, but in the meantime. Uh, we don't really have the eye discussion that we should have. And I keep saying that I'm going to have the discussion with you guys and give you some pretty good resources. And I think that this is going to be the video that I do that in. So it's going to be a little bit more than a shop update and a little bit less than a spray session because I'm not going to build anything for you this morning. I am going to be filming today, tomorrow, and Sunday, I think, um, and figuring out which spray session I'm going to give you guys for the week. But in the meantime... I'm holding the Hamilton Crawl, and you guys have seen this before, but it is wake bait season. It has come, especially here in the south, Texas, Arkansas, I'm in Arkansas, in the delta part, so the, the southern lakes have probably completely spawned out. The northern stuff should be finishing up, or just finished, maybe about a week past, um, so all that stuff should be, should be done. But top water season is upon us ladies and gentlemen so make sure you guys are ready for it and there is nothing nothing in dirty water like fluorescence so this is a it's kind of like a louisiana pattern color but this is the hamilton crawl and it's been named the hamilton crawl after uh, a good acquaintance of mine that lives in ireland who is a phenomenal artist in his own right andy hamilton you can check out his amazing work um it's street art graph uh, almost uh, along the animation line of stuff but it's it's very cool it's very um very now type of art so check them out at mytarpit.com it's www.mytarpit as in like la brea tar pits, dot com andy hamilton this lure is yours and it goes out to you every time i build it and it is on the website so you can find this on my website as well but I've got a couple of those this morning. It's, yeah, it's just, I've been cleaning out the eyelets. Um, real quick though, a lot of you guys ask me, does the size, the I, what was the question that I just got? Does the size of the drip wire play any kind of um, part in how much buildup you're gonna have in your tail eyelet? And I've used, the, the width of, or the diameter, I guess you would say, of a paper clip in these, and, and most of them, let me see if I can find one that I've already cleaned. Most of these, these eyelets are pretty standard. You get the same in most bass baits, which is what a lot of us are dealing with. We're doing, uh, we're doing baits for the bass industry, um, but they're the same. So I've used a paper clip, which is, there's loads of room in here, and I still get built up. Um, there I've also used the stuff that I'm currently using is like an 18 gauge 25 pound picture hanging wire and it comes on a great big spool and I just use needle nose pliers wire cutters to, to snip it to the length that I need um, I don't notice a whole lot of difference um, the only thing that I really would say that I notice if I have the time to do it is like on wiggle warts I take the tail drip wire off because of where the bottom hook uh, eyelet is. It's a little bit further up and there's some lipless that do that as well. Um, so I'll take those off so that it doesn't get stuck to the side of the bait. I'll take those, uh, those drip wires off about 15 minutes. And I have noticed that on the baits that I take the drip wires off after about 15 or 20 minutes, at least with KBS, I don't know how that works with uh, you guys that use epoxy, the two part, like the DevCon. Um, or the UV, but it, there's less when I actually pull that drip wire out, so there's less of a buildup. But you have to make sure that the, the bait is done bleeding, uh, epoxy down and gravity has, has finished and it's gotten tacky enough to where, not too tacky, to where it's too hard and it's gonna pull the, the paint off with it, but tacky enough to where you can slide that out. So usually after about 15 or 20 minutes, I'll take that out on, on wiggle warts. And I do notice a little bit less. So maybe that's a trick for you guys. Um, let me know if you guys uh, if you guys do that, if you guys take the drip wires out or leave them on. Leave me a comment in your uh, 
in your notes below. But this is that, uh, this is one of two acid wash craws. And you can see I did get the effects on these. That's the other frequent question that I get from you guys is how in the world do you pull that off? And I get, I get questions like, do you use silicone? Nope, I don't. Um, I do use silicone in canvas work, but silicone clogs up the airbrush. You can't, and it also pits the bait, um, just like it pits canvas. So what silicone does is it separates paint, separates the pigments out. And um, a lot of people would say, oh, well, you know, you, it stinks. If you use 100%, there's, um, there's stuff out there that's called treadmill silicone, and it's 100%. It's not like the workshop or tool hardware type silicone. It's pure. There's no odor to it. And that's what most of us use in canvas work if we're doing acrylic pours. And you guys have seen me do a few of those. But for this particular bait or any type of airbrushing, I don't use any kind of silicone at all. This effect is purely a result of different types of paint reacting to one another. So just like uh, there, and I have done this in a video, I've done it successfully, but like I tell you guys, it's a crap shoot. It's 50, 50. So I really have to have like all the planets line up for this to go down. So the humidity has to be a little bit high, but I've been taking notes as I go. The humidity needs to be above 60% in my shop for this to happen. So usually if we've got a front coming in, I'll spray stuff like this on the front end of the of the front if that makes sense before it starts raining or as it's raining um i'll layer a full white on this completely and then i'll add transparent bright red and this is createx and wickeds that i'm using and auto air so it's three different types of paint it's uh, it's a primer which is the createx opaque that i mix with a little bit of transparent just to get it to shoot right when i'm layering it on um, so that's maybe a factor, is that I mix my own primer, I don't know. And then I use the transparent bright red createx, and bright is B-R-I-T-E, so that's the actual color name. I layer that, and that, that doesn't seem to matter whether my primer is still tacky and wet, or my, prior, or my, my primer has been um, heat set before I put the red on. Um, seems to be a little more effective after I've heat set it. So then after the bright red, then I throw on a deep red or a candy apple red, which is the auto air. And then on top of that is this wicked detail black magenta. And the, the black magenta, as you guys can see, is what separates out of this bait. And it gives it that really cool acid wash, wash effect. I can't always get it to fire off the way I want to. I hate to waste baits. So normally what I'll do is I'll take a crappy old bait to see if it's going to do it uh, on any given particular day. And I'll run those colors like I'll prime a crappy bait and then I'll shoot. And if I can get it to line up on a crappy bait, then I'll do it on this. So I hope that didn't sound like random garbage there came out of my I'm hoping that made some sense for you guys, but that's that's how I do it. That's how I set it up. I do have uh, a spray session on the acid wash effect that I did a few months ago. It's on a Fat Papa, on a Spro Fat Papa KO. So go check that out. But these are the baits that I've pretty much got to show for you. Uh, working on a couple of new patterns. This is one of them. It's a Wiffle Bug. That's at least what I'm calling it, not the Biffle Bug. We're not talking about the elite guy, um, Greg Biffle. We're talking about... Is it Greg Biffle? I don't know. I'm getting NASCAR and fishing confused. Sorry. It's Friday morning and I'm only halfway through the first cup. This is the Wiffle Bug. And I'm calling it that because of the, the golf ball type dimples that I'm putting on its cheeks. It reminds me of a Wiffle Ball or a Titleist golf ball. And then the rest of it looks like a bug because of the eyes that I put on it. So this is just a, a plum pearl with detailed black magenta. I've got a pearl lime on the back, and I shot a little bit of gold over the entire thing, left the belly white. Um, I did shoot at a curve. You can see that I've shot the, um, the median line, the middle line here, and then uh, hand detailed this pectoral fin. So I like it. I'm going to swim it. I think it'll swim just fine. 
or fish just fine. I know it's going to swim fine. This is a great blank. Uh, this is just that 2.5 pressed from a Lucky Craft. But I think that uh, the pattern's going to be gangbusters. So we'll see. I'll let you guys know how that does. And then I've got one little random copper craw here. These are all going out this morning. So I need to get back on point and get that done. But um, I do briefly want to go over a few things because I keep talking about, and I'm just going to go to the bottom here because I, I might pull one out of the top. Um, I keep talking about a specific type of, let's see where they're at. That's all Jetson. You guys were asking about these. I've gotten a lot of questions about these real eyes. Um, this is your part number, folks. It's 2816-14, and then let me show you what the red looks like. The red looks good as well. Let me see if I can find it in here. I know I have them, but I think I have them in a bigger, uh, yeah, bigger millimeter for larger, like, swim baits and stuff. These are great eyes. They look like smallmouth eyes to me. This would be fantastic in a swim bait, but this is your part number for that. So a lot of you guys are asking about that. It's 2816. You can find it. At lower parts online, I know a lot of it, it can be a little tricky getting through their website because of how the how the website is done. Um, so just look for those numbers, and that's just the it's just more of the same there. But then the other question that I get is, where are you getting your big stuff? Because I've started doing bigger baits, bigger swim baits um, this year, and there's quite a bit that you can get. For a, if you're a if you're a builder on a budget, if you guys are spraying and looking for solutions that are not going to cost you an arm and a leg, like um, six dollars for nine eyes or ten eyes, then I would recommend going through Amazon and just look for and I'm going to spell it out for you guys. It's Brule B R U L E. Look for Brule eyes because they do have some really good lifelike and I've, I've got some what big eyes I have. These are some of the ones that I use for real, real big swim baits and musky type stuff. But, um, and they're pretty lifelike, and they you need to use epoxy with them. I always recommend doing epoxy anyways. It doesn't have to be that brand. It can be any brand. Uh, but I wanted to take a couple minutes because you guys have asked uh, repeatedly recently what the deal is and where I'm getting some of my eyes. This is also an Amazon product. Um, but they're, like, again, I, I'm not knocking any in particular places or there's a lot of resources Ali, aliexpress.com is another great place and if you have um, boutique desires and it's a little bit pricey but the quality that you get um, places like Jetson Lure Eyes and, and uh, Dead Meat those are both phenomenal phenomenal places to get some eyes from so I've always been very happy with the stuff that I've got. It takes a little bit longer to get those because they're all custom builds from my understanding. But um, that's that's a little trick on the eyes. So Lure Parts Online is a good resource. AliExpress and Amazon are great resources. And then if you want to go with the higher end and really get those cool, cool, cool like the frog eyes and stuff, go see John at Jetson. Um, Dinger also has pretty cool eyes as well. He's got, um, let's see real quick here. Dinger does um, mostly the standard bass build type eyes in the five, four, five, six, seven millimeter area. So you can get some of the really cool. I use these for wa uh, walleye patterns more than anything. Um, and he also carries these purples. And it, it's hit or miss sometimes when you can get them. But when he does have them in stock, it's certainly something to take advantage of. And then the last thing I would talk about real quick with the eyes, and then I'm going to let you guys get back to it. And I've mentioned these before. These are really cool too, um, but they are glass eyes. And a word of caution for all you guys, and they're super cool, and they look good, and the, the quantities are a little bit funky in some of this stuff. So you get what you pay for. These are inexpensive. So uh, quantities can be a little bit screwy, but the, they're cool eyes. Here's the thing, though. If you're going to put them in something like a, a shallow square bill crankbait, they're glass eyes. Glass eyes bouncing off of rocks are a 
about as likely to crack as anything, whether they've got epoxy over them or not. They will shatter a whole lot faster. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're gonna do something like a, a, a glass eye, I would recommend them for stuff like um, stuff like uh, Gerald Novick and Pete Carter are doing, which are the open swims, the, the open water swim baits, because you're a little bit less likely to crack them on something if you're doing big swim bait builds. So that's my little tips and tricks on the tail end of this. We've run a little bit long. Uh, I, I actually didn't think it was going to be that long today because I've got just these few to show you, but we did go over some eyes and some other stuff, and I think that's going to do it. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Go catch a bunch. Get out on the water. Get outside. Breathe some fresh air. Get away from your TV screen. That's my recommendation for the weekend, if you can do it. If you're working, my apologies. Get out when you can, and I'll see you guys on the water. Happy casting.